In this tutorial, I will be using Atom, a code editor that has been gaining popularity among developers because it is similar to Sublime Text and Visual Code. It is free software. However, I don't recommend it for Windows users since it usually uses many resources. Today, we will learn to use Arise. Open file 3 of the tutorial and render the first scene as an image. We see the first six letters of the alphabet but in different colors. Now let's analyze the code. To change the color of an object, use the command set color and in parentheses the color. There are already some predefined colors. You can find them in the constants file in the manylib folder almost to the end. You can add new colors here respecting the format of the other colors. Returning to the main document, we see that I have separated each of the letters forming a list. This is known as an array. When we assign a text to a variable, as we have been doing now, the text is assigned to a block of memory, which we can access using the name of the variable. If we separate the text as a list, then the text is stored in several blocks of memory. And to each block is assigned the text in the order they appear. To this set of memory blocks is assigned the name of the variable, and to each block is assigned a number, which starts from 0 to n1, where n is the number of elements in the list. Then to an array of 4 elements, 4 blocks will be assigned, from 0 to 3. And to access each element, you have to specify the block number in brackets. So in this example, we see that there are 6 elements, where the block 0 is assigned the A, the block 1 the B, and so on until the F. To modify the properties of a particular element, we enclose the block number of the element in square brackets, as shown in the following examples. When using subscripts, superscripts, or roots, the order can change and even elements can be omitted. The 
the root symbols occupy two blocks instead of one. And so that the subscripts and superscripts don't modify the order of the elements, first write the superscript and then the subscript. In case symbols are omitted at the end, as in this case that the X is being omitted, then you can add some small ones at the end, the necessary ones for the complete formula to be written. When we write complex formulas, it can be complicated to take the order of each of the blocks. So I have created a tool that can be very helpful. Copy the code that I will leave in the description and paste it at the beginning of the document, as we did with screen grid. This class is a scene that serves to show the number of each block of a formula. The format is the next one. Create a new scene. And instead of writing scene in parentheses, use the next name. Instead of writing the construct method, write this. In this part of here, enter the formula and render the scene as an image. You can see the numbers in red of each of the elements of the formula. If we want to highlight a particular element, then we do the following. We add a comma to the end of the formula and write show elements. And in brackets, we write all the elements that we want to highlight. On this other page, I will leave you the manual of how to use this scene.
To change the color of a particular word or symbol, use the command set color by text. However, I only recommend to use it for texts, not for formulas because it may fail. A very useful command to perform iterative processes is for. For example, if we want to color the elements 0, 1, 3, and 4 in red, then we write the following. I think the code is clear enough for you to understand how it works. The variable i must be free, that is, it should not have been assigned an object or value beforehand. It can also be used for tuples. For example, if I want to color the element 2 red and the 4 rows, then the format is as follows. Although you can also use the zip command using the following format. As a task, I will let you analyze the cross text scenes on, modify the parameters that are being used. Remember that Manim is constantly changing, so it is possible that many of these comments change, and the only way to learn for now is by experimenting. To be able to continue with the following tutorials, it is necessary to have more knowledge of Python 3. Specifically, you must learn from topic 3 of this page up to topic 5, also preferably up to topic 8, and you must also learn to use variable lists. It's not much, and this knowledge will help you a lot for your animations.